being good life with Miyoko again. I, I have my family visiting me from my, from Japan. Hi. My son Aki, his beautiful wife Nine, and Emma is just the newborn baby, my granddaughter, and beautiful Mia-chan. I only get to see him about once a year because he plays basketball in Japan. Um, uh, it's been there for over 10 years. Now we're going to start out today by making a really simple ricotta from pumpkin seeds and cashews. So let's go in the kitchen. It's a little chaotic there because there's a lot of people eating a lot of food. Okay, I'm in the kitchen. We're going to start on the ricotta. As I mentioned, we're going to make it out of pumpkin seeds and cashews. Now, you probably have seen videos of pumpkin seed tofu going around, and pumpkin seeds coagulate beautifully when they're heated but they're a little firm. We can make it creamier and more ricotta-like by the addition of some cashews. So that's what we're gonna do. I've got a cup of pumpkin seeds here, two-thirds cup of cashews. If you don't have a really strong blender, this is something I found online. It is a pumpkin seed meal. It's already ground up. Uh, I found it on Amazon. It was really easy to get. So this is another substitute that you can use instead of whole pumpkin seeds. But let's get started. Starting out with four cups of water, and I'm going to add a teaspoon of sea salt. The salt helps the coagulation of the pumpkin seeds. And I have a cup of raw pumpkin seeds I'm going to add to this. And two-thirds cup of raw cashews, and I'm going to puree this until it fine milk is formed. Okay, that was about 50 seconds, depends on the equipment that you have, but I have this nice, creamy, foamy milk, and it's going to go into this pot right here. All of that. And the heat is going to coagulate the protein in the pumpkin seeds. Uh, and the cashews will keep it slightly creamy, so we end up with a result that's very, very much like, rico uh, like ricotta. Uh, the greener your pumpkin seeds, uh, the greener your ricotta will be, but not very green. Because we've added cashews, we've added water, uh, and so it'll be sort of pale green color, absolutely lovely. And what we're going to do with it is we're going to make some basil pesto. We're going to stir that into our ricotta. And then we're going to make lasagna roll-up. So this is the cheating way to make a lasagna dinner in a hurry. I've gone ahead and I have cooked up these lasagna noodles. Uh, very, very al dente. I took them out before they were completely soft and falling apart. In the United States, we tend to overcook our pasta. You really want to take it out before, but when it's still got a hard center, because it's going to continue to soften as it cools and as it cooks with your sauces or whatever. So I took these out when they became pliable and I just made sure that they were coated in oil so they wouldn't stick together because I'm not gonna use these for a while. But ultimately, we're gonna stuff this with the, the basil flavor, the pesto flavored ricotta. We're gonna roll them up, put them in the oven with some tomato sauce and just bake it for 15 minutes and you've got a really easy sort of cheating lasagna dinner in a hurry. So that's what we're gonna be making here today. The whole process for coagulating this milk probably takes, oh, five to eight minutes, depending on how high you have your temperature. I have it on probably medium high or medium low, whatever you want to call it. And what's going to happen is this is going to start curdling. And so you want to have a scraper, like I do, kind of scraping the bottom from time to time. You don't have to do it constantly, but you want to scrape the bottoms and the sides every minute or two. Uh, to sort of scrape off anything that's already coagulating and bring the liquid stuff to the bottom so we can get the entire pot coagulated. We then have to drain it, and that draining takes about an hour. Uh, so in that meantime, you could be cooking your pasta, making your pesto, uh, I don't know, having a glass of wine, playing with your grandkids, whatever, uh, because that does take a little bit of time just to drain. The whole process takes five minutes, the draining takes an hour. You could also use it for dessert if you wanted to make a ricotta cheesecake or stuff a turnover with it, uh, apples and ricotta. Uh, I'd love to make this ricotta and pear tart. It's absolutely delicious, so there's a lot you can do with this ricotta. You got out of the pool? Yeah, I just peed in the pool. You peed in the pool? 
Wow. That's what happens. She's so cute, I can't stand it. And my son's hungry, so while I'm coagulating the, uh, I'm, while I'm co coagulating the, uh, the ricotta, I'm going to make some uh, tofu scramble for him and some toast, so I'm going to get that started as well. Nothing is happening quite yet, but it's going to start boiling in about a minute. Maybe two minutes, and you'll start to see some coagulation. I've got a pan here for my son's tofu scramble. So, uh, as a basketball player, he eats a lot. So he'll probably eat. ah, the pan was a little too hot. Let's just get my tofu in here. This is the kind of thing where you can multitask. You can make your tofu scramble and your ricotta at the same time. Okay, this is beginning to curdle. You see those curds? Oh yeah. And you just want to scrape it from time to time, not the entire time, but you do want to scrape it just to stir the entire mass so it heats up all at once. I've been making tofu scramble before tofu scramble was a thing. So I'm talking, gosh, like 40 years or so. Um, and I used to make it for my son. Uh, so it was published in my very first cookbook. It's called Aki's Tofu Egg uh, because the word tofu scramble didn't exist at the time. So that's how far back it goes. And it was very, a very simple recipe, just tofu, nutritional yeast, and soy sauce. I don't add turmeric to it because I'm not trying to make it look like eggs. Uh, it just fulfills that same function. I'm going to just add some garlic powder to this. Not to the ricotta, but to his scrambled tofu. Add some good old nooch, some soy sauce, stir it all up. I really prefer this to tofu scramble that's just made with eight, with salt and uh, turmeric. It just doesn't, it just doesn't have that umami. Now you could add black salt to this. Sometimes I add truffle oil. That makes it taste absolutely delicious. Okay, your tofu scramble, your tofu egg is ready, Aki. It's beginning to boil. Oh, look at that mass. It's beginning to curdle. And you can start to see the separation of the whey. And we're just going to let, I'm going to turn the heat down so it's a little bit lower. We're just going to cook it until the entire mass coagulates. And then we're going to strain it. And we're going to drain it for about an hour. Ooh, it's splattering too. Okay, I'm turning it way down. And you're beginning to see some clear separation of the whey from the curdling. Oh, it is splattering. This is almost done and we are going to strain it in a minute. Okay, so what I'm doing is I've got a nut milk bag over my dirty blender so I don't have to t you dirty another dish. And this is what I'm gonna strain the ricotta in. I'm gonna pour the ricotta in here. We're gonna let it sit for about an hour until all the whey has drained and it has turned into this lovely, light, fluffy ricotta. Yeah, I've got whey and I have curds and I'm going to pour it in here. I'm going to scrape the bottom. Now another thing I sometimes do is I'll take a bag like this and I will just tie it over my, just put it over my sink like this and we'll just let it drain. And especially if I'm making something like a, a, a really firm goat cheese type thing and I want to drain it for more than an hour so I get a really firm cheese. I'll let it drain all night. And we just want to drain this for about an hour. Um, and then we'll make the pesto and the lasagna roll-ups. All right, we're gonna make a really quick pesto. Uh, so pesto just means sauce, kind of. So there's different kinds of pesto. So this is a basilico or basil pesto. And typically it's made out of basil, obviously Parmesan cheese, pine nuts. Uh, we're not going to use the Parmesan cheese. We're going to use some miso instead. This is going to add not only the salt, but that cheesiness that we're looking for. So I've got, oh, I don't know, a couple tablespoons of miso in there. Oh, we need garlic. So... Uh, we can add as much or as little as, as you want. Uh, we'll start out with maybe three, three or four cloves, depending on the size. Uh, so I'm going to add some pine nuts. Now you can use walnuts, you can use almonds. The pine nuts give it a very specific flavor. So maybe 
quarter cup, a third of a cup, uh, and then I'm going to add the basil. And I'm going to add the entire bunch of beautiful fresh basil in season now for very little money. You know, and I'm just not that uptight about the, uh, the stem. So I pull the leaves off, and I don't want the big stems in there. But, you know, if there's some smaller stems, big deal. It's not going, it's all going to get pureed anyway. Now, typically, when I really want to go all out and I want to share the good life, I do this in a mortar and pestle. So I'm actually not cutting the leaves and everything. I'm actually pounding it, releasing the flavor. It's so much better that way. But it works in a blender too, especially when you try to make a lot in a hurry. Now that other ingredient that's so important, obviously, is olive oil. So we're going to add some olive oil to this. And we'll add more if we, if we need, and a little bit of nutritional yeast for more of that Parmesan flavor. When you've got the nutritional yeast and the miso together, it tastes like cheese. Let us uh, puree that. Now, I don't like to over-process my pesto. I want to leave some chunks in there. I want to have a little bit of texture so it's not so smooth. Okay. Woo! I got my pesto ready. That's going to go into the ricotta when the ricotta is done. And then we're going to roll some pasta with that. I'm ready to unveil the ricotta after it's been draining and pulling it out of the bag here. Oh, look at that. Look at that lovely, light, fluffy ricotta. Now, I, it should, you should let it drain for about an hour. I didn't. I kind of wanted to expedite it, so I gave it a little squeeze to get as much water out as possible. And into this ricotta, I'm going to mix in some of this, base, this uh, pesto that I made to flavor it. Ooh. So this is pesto ricotta. Ah, oh, that is so lovely. Now I'm going to take my cooked uh, lasagna sheets and I'm going to roll these up like that. Now if I were to make lasagna, I wouldn't even cook the sheets because the lasagna noodles cook in the oven when they're in there for an hour with a bunch of sauce and fillings and things, and you really don't need to cook them. But if you're making these roll-ups, you kind of do, because they have to be pliable. Uh, and then I coated them in oil so they wouldn't stick together when I, when I uh, stack them, but obviously you don't need to, to do that if you're cooking them and using them right away. This ricotta is so delicious. It's so fragrant. Such an easy dish. And pumpkin seeds are such a great source of fiber and protein. So you're getting kind of a bombshell of nutrition here uh, with all the fiber, the nutrition, the protein, which obviously you, you're going to get plenty of eating a whole foods vegan diet anyway. Uh, but hey, this is one way, you know, if you've got an athlete in the family that's looking for extra protein, for example, this is a fantastic dish. And I wasn't really counting how many noodles I threw in, so it looks like I threw in seven noodles today, but obviously you have enough filling here for maybe 12, so maybe six servings if you give two of these per person. Okay, I'm going to pour over it just some San Marzano tomatoes. Uh, this is something I made. I made 32 pizzas the other day for an event, and this is kind of leftover from that. So it's just San Marzano tomatoes with some salt, a little olive oil, some garlic, and I'm going to top it with some basil. In other words, the sauce is going to cook itself in the oven, so you don't need to cook it. Of course, you, if you want to just use a jar of tomato sauce, uh, spaghetti sauce or whatever you bought, that's fine too. But you can also just keep it really simple. Throw in the basil. and into a 350 degree oven, it goes. Okay, I think my little lasagna roll-ups are ready. Oh yeah, this looks good. And 
I cheated before I stuck it in the oven. I put some vegan cheese on just for some color and it's bubbling away and it's looking so good. Let me grab a plate and we'll serve it up. Oh, this looks so good. Look at that. Look at that deliciousness. Such an easy dish. That basil scented ricotta. Oh, it looks so delicious with a tomato sauce that cooked itself in the oven. I didn't even have to make it separately. It's so good. It's so good? <laughs> oh! It's kid approved. And that's made Thank out of pumpkin you, seeds and cashews and it's high in protein Thank and fiber. You, Thank you. I, you're very welcome. You are so polite. You're so good. You're so polite. No, I made some dinner. Did you make dinner for the piggies? What did you do? I put some lettuce, some pigs I'm going to see if one of the piggies wants to eat some too. Oh. <laughs> Let's go share with a piggy. Oh, that was yummy, huh? She wants more. That's what I call dinner. This is a vegan good life with Miyoko. See you next week.